Hello everyone, welcome back to the Oberon channel. Back online again after a very long lasting break, so I have to apologize for this, but I have so much other projects to do and the time slots are becoming narrower and narrower, you know. <clears throat> but now I'm online again and um, there are a lot of things that happened in the meantime since the last video. Um, I got in contact with one of my video followers with my fellow uh, friend Sergey and Sergey told me he discovered how to connect the overall machine to the internet and this really works, it's great. And um, based on this experience we had a lot of idea what we can do in the following videos. Um, not only showing how to connect to the internet, uh, how to download or how to um, um, display HTML uh, websites on the Oron desktop, how to do with FTP file transfer and web hosting and writing online tutorials. So there are tons of topics to cover, a lot of stuff for the following videos, but as a basic, as a primer, we first have to tell you how to connect your machine to the internet. And it's not that hard, I will tell you. So take a care, take a close look and see how we did it. So the first thing, thing to do, of course, is to get yourself a suitable network adapter. <clears throat> there are three types of network adapters that, are, um, uh, that Oberon provides drivers for, and I'm going to tell you in a few seconds what kind of uh, network cards you should prefer. This one here is in 3COM905. You can see it has a PCI slot connection interface and this one you have to insert in your Oberon system. As you can see here my Beetle 2 system is a little bit narrow. There's not very much space. I hope you can see this is a slot here and here you can see the PCI connector at the bottom. This little white stripe at the bottom you can see. So <clears throat> carefully insert the card into the um, connector and also take care that the back end fits nicely into the slot otherwise you will have a bad connection or the um, network interface won't be accessible. So this is definitely nothing for small hands, especially not for my ones, because I don't have small hands. But now it fits very nicely here. So now we have to fix it by um, screwing in this little screw. So the slot now is fixed. And now we can reassemble the device. Okay. Now we fired up Oberon and as you can see I opened the system configuration file oberon.txt by executing edit.openoberon.txt and clicking on middle clicking on edit open. So it's already open here as you can see and you will recognize um, that we have different um, areas here or chapters in uh, this file and we have one chapter called net system so this implies already that this is something to do with the internet connection and um, there's some information you need to fill in there's a domain name which is not so important you can write in anything you want I inserted here my own domain name um, we need um, the IP addresses of uh, one, two or three uh, DNS servers for the um, for the um, name solution uh, for the name um, resolution of the of the uh, email uh, of the um, internet, internet addresses we type in, and then we have a section here dealing with the network interface card itself. As you can see here, we have one driver here which is called Net3Com9. OX install device. Uh, as I told you a few seconds ago, my uh, graph, uh, my um, internet adapter or my my network adapter is a uh, 3.9.0 uh, 
six. So this is a driver that matches my network card. There are some other cards you can see. We have also a Netcom 509 driver and a Netcom 906, a uh, 90 which is the one we already installed, and we have an NE2000. So you can see these are all very popular um, network adapters, uh, which are very common and frequently used back in the 80s and 90s. So you don't have very much choice, but it's high likely, highly likely that you can um, afford to get one of these old cars because they were so frequently used everywhere. Um, I bought mine on eBay for some, some euros and it wasn't any problem. Okay, um, so you have to insert the driver here that corresponds to your respective uh, network adapter. Then we have some more information here, as I told you, the DNS server. <coughs> and we also have a host address. This is the name of uh, the IP address of my machine over a machine itself, like it is seen from my router. You know, I have um, a telecom router. Uh, which handles all the ingoing and outgoing internet traffic and um, the IP address the router is reserving or acknowledging for my overall machine is this one here so we have to find out where it is um, then we have a gateway address and we have a net mask and now I'm going to tell you one by one where we can get all this information so let's start first with the top line here finding out uh, what the IP addresses of the DNS servers are. Okay, now I switched over to my Linux machine and opened the Firefox browser and like any other router, of course, my router also has an, um, an access you can um, afford over um, a normal HTML browser and I already opened it and you have a user interface to configure uh, to, to configure the, um, the router and when I go to the internet section here and I open IP address information you can see I have a primary DNS server and a secondary DNS server and we have both IP addresses here and now it's a good idea to write them down on a piece of paper with a pencil and when we switch over to Oberon again, you can see that these are exactly the both IP addresses I entered here for DNS0 and DNS1. I don't have a third DNS server, so I left this line here in the Oberon uh, text file unchanged. So the next information we need, of course, is the host address. The host address is the IP address the um, router is providing for my machine. So the way to uh, get this information is to ask by using of this running machine what host address it got from the router. So this is a bit of a tricky because I currently have no means to do this in Oberon but I also have Windows XP on my machine and so I'm gonna start Windows XP and discover the host IP address by using Windows XP tools. Okay now you can see I rebooted my system in Windows XP and now let's go over to the network settings which are here I use LAN connection number three and when we go over to network support you can see all those needed informations here. You have an IP address 192.168.2.114. We have a standard subnet mask of 255, 255, 255 and 0 and standard gateway is 192.168.2.1 so it's a good idea to write this down on a piece of paper and then we close this and again we reboot 
into Oberon. So and now the only thing left to do is to insert this new information into the respective data fields. That means providing the host name you already saw on my XP window screen and here providing the gateway address, the net mask and that's all. Then you should ensure that the device parameter here is set to device 0 and device 0 is referencing to your um, suitable network adapter driver and then you're done. There's nothing more to do. There's another section here you can see dealing with uh, email and I had some tries on it and uh, it's already inserted my server addresses for reading and writing email um, but it didn't work. But the problem is not lying here in Oberon, the problem is lying in the fact that you, as far as I know it, you don't find any um, mail servers on the internet or providers with mail servers on the internet that do not implement the uh, encrypted data transfer and um, uh, connecting to your account via TTL or all the other um, encrypted stuff. So Oberon is a system of the 80s and 90s and there was a plain authentication by a username and a password and no encryption and because the current email provider don't provide this feature anymore because it's uh, seen as uh, heavily unsecure um, you have a problem that you have to set up your own email server to get Oberon email running and that's something I uh, didn't do yet <laughs> okay well that's another thing so um, now reboot Oberon and let's see if it's running. So Oberon is rebooted, now let's see if it works. Before you can do anything um, you have to start the net system manually. You also can implement this feature in the Oberon.txt in the automatic start section if you want but uh, currently I prefer to start and stop it by hand. So let's type net system dot start takes a while and now Oberon comes back and says net system is started. So that's a good uh, that's good news and now let's try to open uh, an HTML page in the internet. Um, I have to explain that uh, Oberon just implements a very very limited subset of HTML uh, 4.01 transitional so this is an old standard and it's not completely implemented so when you open a normal web page in Oberon you will see that a lot of things do not work uh, Oberon is more or less um, friendly when the home page is very the web page is very very simple and uh, me and Sergey we are working on some simple Oberon pages um, to serve the Oberon community and uh, I will give you the information when the web page is up and running. And now let's just try it. <coughs> it's still under contraction, so it's not fully working. But you can see now how we have to open a um, web page in Oberon. We do normal desktops open doc. And then you have to write a string <coughs> HTTP colon two slashes and www native overrun dot org so this is the name of our home page this HTTP is very important because it tells desktops uh, the desktops module that you want to open um, a document in the internet so that it uses uh, the net system for connection to the um, to the document and not the local file system <clears throat> so now let's click it and see what happens and you see it works you see this is very simple text 
you have uh, some headers and you have a normal text and you have some pictures which do not work actually but I'm I'm on this problem I think I can I can fix it um, it's a very simple layout when you open it with a normal browser it looks a little more beautiful but um, for my needs this is absolutely okay because I like this simple and plain interface that just concentrates on the content on the information and not on on the uh, on the framework and on the colors and on some useless gadgets and brimming and beeping interfaces which I actually do not want <clears throat> okay so that's working um, when you're finished you can type net system stop and system stopped so I think that was an interesting primer for you um, as I said this is just the base we have now tons of things we can do with the net connection um, me and Sega we are building up an overall file server where you can download all those examples I showed you already in my previous tutorials all those programming examples and code snippets and stuff like that and tools I made I will put there and you can download it in Oberon or you can download it with a normal browser and then transfer it via floppy disk or USB stick or whatever you want to Oberon and we will build up a native Oberon tutorial page with all those tutorials I did in those videos you can see there in written form and the cool thing is that um, as you know Oberon can execute commands from everywhere on your desktop that means also you can execute commands inside your browser so what we're going to make is some kind of interactive tutorial series that means you can actually execute those examples from inside your HTML browser in Oberon you can compile code or you can execute scripts or stuff like that you don't need to download it and execute it you can execute it directly from the tutorial side and this is pretty pretty cool for an overall for an operating system that is more than 20 years old so thank you for watching and uh, see you back on the overall channel bye